I am very lazy when it comes to animating in my videos. So today I'm gonna show you five lazy but powerful ways to animate using motion. The first way I'm gonna show you how to animate is by using parameter behaviors. And this is actually a whole lot of different ways you can animate, but I'm gonna batch it all into one category. So selecting our circle, let's go ahead and take a look over here at the transform properties. And in here we can see we've got position, rotation, and scale. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust the scale. So I'm gonna find this down arrow next to the scale, click on it, add a parameter behavior, and we are going to select overshoot. Now what we can do is set the value here to negative 100%. And what that has done is it has negated the scale that was set at 100%. So it has subtracted 100% of this 100% value. Now what we can do is go ahead and shorten the length of this animation to just one second by pushing O. So we've trimmed up this purple line here. And if we push play, we can see that the circle has been animated for us. So that has saved me a ton of time. Rather than having to dive into the keyframe editor, we already have this great little overshoot animation. And it comes with all of these other values. So we can adjust the ramp duration, the cycles, the acceleration, and all of these different values are going to give you a completely different look on your animation. So this is exceptionally powerful and it works with all of the different parameters. So if we were to take this circle, jump into our position settings and we could go ahead, click on this down arrow and I'll right click on the X value, add a parameter behavior and we could go ahead and just select ramp. Now we could set the start value of this to be something like this off to the side. We'll shorten up the amount of time it takes and we can see how that pops in and slides just like so. Maybe we wanna smooth out the animation a bit. So all we need to do is drag up our curvature slider and just like that, we have this great little animation that plays out for us. So hopefully you can see the immense power that parameter behaviors have. Also, if you want more information on this, I will link a video down below where I cover every single parameter behavior in Apple Motion. The next lazy but powerful way to animate in Apple Motion is by using text sequencers. Let's say we wanted to animate this text. Now you could go the extraordinarily difficult route of creating individual characters that are all separated and then animating them in yourself or you can use the text sequencer. So if we wanted to animate our text, all we need to do is go on up to our behaviors and go down to this text animation category. Now anything underneath this text animation category is going to allow you to animate your text. So in here, you've got stuff like scroll text, sequence text, just a few basic things. But if you wanted something a little bit more advanced and pre-made, all you need to do is go to text basic. And today I'll just choose something like arrange in. This is one of my favorites. So if I push play, all of my text animates in beautifully for me and it saves me a ton of time having to work with the different animations. Also, if we wanted to, we could click and drag out this arrange in animation to make it a little bit slower. We could go over to the left side and find under the controls panel and adjust all of these different settings to get it looking exactly as we like, as well as going up into the format settings. So if we wanted the position to be quite a bit greater, we could even drag this up more. And if we push play, now the text is coming from farther away. If we didn't want it to fade in, we could remove the opacity. So now the text is already there. We could adjust the rotation a whole bunch. So now it's really spinning into place. And so that is why the text sequencer is so incredibly powerful in Apple Motion. And it saves you a ton of time, especially if you're like me and you might be just a little bit lazy. The next tool is so incredibly powerful, especially if you have a ton of different objects you need to animate in your scene. So in my project, I've created a replicator of all of my circles and I've put them on a line. Let's say I kind of want a nice little bouncing floating animation for all of these different circles. Selecting my replicator, I'll just go up to behaviors and find the replicator parameter and we'll select sequence replicator. Now this is very similar to the text sequencer. However, it works for objects that are not text related. If we go to the left side, you can see we have this parameter and we can select to add a different parameter. So let's go ahead and add the position parameter to our objects. Then from there, we can go ahead and drag down on the position. So now if we push play, you'll see that each of these objects is dropping in over time. So coming down, we can adjust up like the spread. So if I drag that up just a little bit and then push play, you'll see how the different objects are sliding at different times. So let's go ahead and adjust that spread a little bit more. And so now more of the objects are moving at the same time. Then from there, we can adjust stuff like the loops. So let's go ahead and set the loops to something like five. 
And if we push play, now they'll go down, drop at the bottom, and then reset. But maybe we want them bouncing back and forth. Well, we can change the end condition over to ping pong. So now they'll bounce down, and then they'll move back up. We could also adjust the constant speed. Let's go ahead and do ease in, ease out. And so they have a nice smooth animation just like so. Now it's totally up to you how fast you want this to be. Let's go ahead and keep dragging our loops up so they're maybe a little bit faster. We could even adjust stuff like the scale. So I'll go ahead and adjust the scale and we'll have it adjust so that they shrink down to 60%. So if we push play, they'll shrink down and then get large as they go back up. So hopefully you can see the immense power that this has if you have a whole bunch of objects on your screen that you want to animate at once, but you want them to be offset just a little bit. Now this next tool definitely has a little bit more of a niche use case, but it saves you so much time when you do need it. Currently, I have a rectangle going in a circular motion. Now, what if I wanted this rectangle to consistently point in the direction that it was moving around the circle? If I was a crazy man, I could go into my properties and adjust my rotation so it's lined up and then click to add a keyframe, move forward in time, and then just keep adjusting the rotation to get it going in a circle. But that would take so much time. So what you can use is the snap alignment to motion parameter. Selecting that rectangle, let's go up to behaviors, we'll go to basic motion and select snap alignment to motion. So if we push play, we can now see that this rectangle is always pointing in the direction that it is moving around the circle. Also, you can adjust stuff like the rotation axis. So maybe we want it on the X axis and it'll flatten it out like a pancake, but you can see that it's moving in 3D space just like so. So it definitely doesn't need to always be used, but when you do need this parameter, it is going to save you so much time. And that's why I thought I would share it in this list. Now here we are at the last parameter behavior that is by far my favorite on the list and that is motion path. With the rectangle selected, we can go up to behaviors, basic motion, and select motion path. Now you'll see here, if I zoom out with that rectangle selected, that there is this red line coming off to the right side. Go ahead and select the motion path, and you'll see that that gives us two control points. So now I can click and drag these control points to anywhere I want. If I want it to come from the top right hand corner and go to the bottom left, and if I push play, now our rectangle is going to slide along that motion. If we wanted to shorten up how long this animation takes, all we need to do is select our motion path, move forward to where you want it to end, and push O. So now it's trimmed down, the animation is much faster. But right now it's very rigid, so let's go ahead and add some nice easing to it. If we take a look over here on the left side, we can change the speed from constant over to ease both. And so now if we push play, it's gonna have this really great easing animation. And you'll notice that once the object has reached its final destination, rather than jumping back to the beginning of the line, it actually just stays in place. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and just duplicate this motion path and then we can go ahead and adjust these parameters so that maybe we want it to slide up to the top left corner. And so now it'll play out, it'll go to the bottom left, and then it'll move up to the top left. And then maybe we want this to actually start moving in a circle. Well, I'll just duplicate this one more time with Command D, and I'll change it from open spline over to circle. So now our rectangle will start moving in a circle. And then finally, if we wanted this object to go over a really completely random shape, maybe a star or something, we could go ahead and create a completely unique shape. And I'll just go ahead and make this whatever we want and close that off. And I'll select the motion path, change it from circle over to geometry and apply the Bezier shape inside of there. Then we can hide the Bezier shape and if we push play, now our rectangle is gonna go around that specific shape. Also, it works exceptionally with the snap alignment to parameter that I just showed. So that was five lazy but powerful ways to animate in Apple Motion. And in reality, this is exactly what Apple Motion is designed to do. So even though I am calling them lazy, it doesn't mean you're actually lazy. It just means you're using the tools to the very best of your ability. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing. Also, if you're interested in learning more about parameter behaviors in Apple Motion, I highly suggest that you check out this video right here. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.